My next guest has a plan to fix our debt budget problems. You might be happy to hear some of his plans. GOP presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy and author of a must-read book called Capitalist Punishment. Vivek, great to see you. I hope the campaign trail is, is treating you okay. Yeah, let's talk about workfare, the, the workfare that Biden used to love. Now he hates it. It was enormously successful. It worked. We had a five-year uh, recap of uh, after 96 of how it worked out in 2001. Welfare cases, welfare cases came way down. Uh, poverty came down as well, particularly childhood poverty. I think we can put it up on the screen. Millions of people became successfully employed, and that was one of the best things, to get people working again, and businesses worked with government to do exactly that. Why shouldn't we go back to what worked so well? We absolutely should. And I think, David, it's important that people see the actual facts here. This is a bill that it's not something extreme. This would actually just ask adults from the ages of 18 to 55 who are able bodied and childless to work more than tw at least 20 hours per week. Think about that. Just part time work for somebody who is able bodied and childless. And even still, it says they can get it still welfare for three months out of a three year period. Mm -hmm. So this is staggering. If I have one criticism of the bill, it's that it does not go far right, enough. Right. And, and requiring more work. And the, action. Point That's is, what I would do. the point is, we have a surplus of jobs in the nation. That's one of the things that has kept exactly. us out of a, a deep recession is the fact that we we do have the jobs for people who are able bodied people without kids that they have to worry about ready to work. Uh, now, I want to talk yes. about the GOP plan to cut the budget, because there's some things in there that I think most Americans would agree on, like we don't have to supersize the IRS to the extent and that we had. We, we, maybe we should retire some of that COVID money that hasn't been spent because we're not in a pandemic anymore. Yes. But you have a very interesting plan. Uh, you would cut the, the Department of Education. Now, the, you know, the Department of Education claims that they're for educational excellence, but we've seen test scores come way down as we've been spending way more money. Uh, explain how you would do it. So, so many of these government agencies should have never existed in the first place. The U.S. Department of Education has no reason for existence. That's why they find toxic things to do, like foisting these race and gender ideologies on the local schools, like subsidizing four-year gender studies majors in California without doing a thing for vocational training for people who want to be plumbers or mechanics. So what I've said is if I'm going to Washington, D.C. as the U.S. president, I will run the executive branch of the government. That means we will shut down agencies that should have never existed. We'll have fewer than 25 percent of the federal employees that work for the federal government today than work for the federal government. And I'll also tell you this, if as the U.S. president, I can't collect a paycheck from the federal government for more than eight years, which I think is a good thing, none of the people reporting into me as bureaucrats will be able to either. We'll use those civil service protections, throw them in the trash, replace them with eight year term limits for the bureaucrats instead. That's the kind of reform that we need. And I think a big part of this, I mean, take that even with respect to the workfare conversation we were just having. These are the ingredients to unlock GDP growth in our country yeah, again. we need that. Economic growth. It's as though we've forgotten it. We revive that. We fix government, streamline it. That's how we unlock the economy as yeah, well, David. Yeah, and, and by the way, uh, there's, there's, another, there's another battle in the Democratic side. Very quickly, I, Robert Kennedy is doing an incredible job with showing a 19% gain on, on, uh, on Biden in terms of that primary. You say... You have challenged him to a debate, Robert Kennedy. So you'd have this Democrat-Republican debate before the primaries. Has he responded to you? Yeah, our teams have been in touch. I actually didn't challenge him. Scott Adams and Megyn Kelly and others on the Internet have been volunteering to put us together in debate. I said I would accept that challenge. And you know what? I think that one of the things about Robert Kennedy, Robert Kennedy Jr., is that his uncle actually did something famous in this country. He traveled on the same plane with Barry Goldwater from location to location. They set an example of how you can disagree but still actually advance debate and yeah. discourse in this country. I think we can do the same thing. Yeah. So I'm in for debate with Republicans. Yeah. With Democrats, I want to set an example of how we do this. Of course, Ronald Reagan used to do that as well. He worked very well with a Democrat speaker yes. when he was president. Vivek, we got to leave it at that. Great to see you. Please stay safe on the campaign trail. Appreciate you being Thank here. Thank you. To the Hill now where energy.